Listen to that. That is the sound of super crunchy and nutritious and delicious beet chips that I made in the air fryer. Bet you can't eat just one. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the most delicious, healthy, and crunchy beet chips in the air fryer. I'm gonna use the Ninja Foodi uh, pressure cooker and air crisper for this, but you could use any air fryer. I will go over some tips though that I found using various air fryers when I tested the recipe. So rest assured, I've got you covered no matter what air fryer you have. All right, so first of all, let's move these aside and get our air fryer preheated. This is extremely important for this recipe and a lot of other recipes where you want the crisping action to happen immediately. So you definitely wanna have your cooking surface inside the appliance while it's preheating because that's gonna get the surface hot and that's what helps to start crisping that food immediately. When I preheat for most everything that I really want crispy, I preheat on the hottest setting. For me, that's the broil setting on the Ninja Foodi, which reaches 450 degrees. So I will use that. Now you use whatever the hottest air crisping or air frying setting is that you have on your appliance. It'll be perfectly fine. So this will go for a full 10 minutes and I do recommend letting it preheat for the full 10 minutes, no matter what air fryer you're using, okay? and we'll get our beets prepped. Now I've already pre-cooked my beets, but I'm gonna explain how to do that really quickly because there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. So when you get a fresh beet from the grocery store, it usually looks something like this. Sometimes it'll have the entire leafy greens on and sometimes not. So basically you wanna cut those off, leave about a half of an inch to an inch of the stem part, then you can leave the root part on as well when you're going to prep them for air crisping, okay? So what I do is I wash them really well, I throw them just like this into the basket of the Ninja Foodi, I put one cup of water in the inner pot, I pressure cook for five minutes, and I do an immediate release. And what that does is number one, allow me to peel them so easily, I just run them under cold water, rub my hands over them, and they turn into this beautifully peeled beet, okay? That's exactly what I did with these. Now, if you don't have a pressure cooker, no worries. You can also uh, either steam, microwave, boil your beets, okay? The consistency you wanna have is a firm beet. Let me just grab this one. Move this over there for now. And I'm gonna cut it straight through the middle. So you see my fork can go in, but it is firm. So this is perfectly cooked for me. So five minutes pressure cook is really good for even just slicing and eating, honestly. But it made the best air fryer chips. So I can go through that perfectly fine. It would be, I would you know, be able to eat it. Mm, I love beet. But it is on the firm side. So if you like your beets softer, you would wanna cook them longer for another you know, purpose, like if you wanted to butter them and eat them. But five minutes is perfect for this recipe of pressure cook time. All right, now the next thing that's extremely important is uniform slices and they need to be thin, okay? So let me grab my mandolin and I'm gonna show you how I slice up the beets for the air fryer beet chips. You wanna set your mandolin on the thinnest setting, which for me is zero millimeters, okay? And it's not gonna be zero millimeters, obviously, when I slice it or it would be nothing, but that is the lowest setting and that's what gives the best results, so I recommend doing the lowest setting on yours. Now I'm gonna grab a beet, a medium-sized beet here, and I'm just gonna take off the one end, okay? I'm just gonna use my mandolin to do that, and it's kinda of stuck up under there. Do it again. All right, and now I'm going to slice my beets. Now I have a glove here, and you can see it's gonna get all purple, and that's fine, I just bleach it. But this is an anti-cut glove, so if you're wondering why I'm not using a guard, it's because of this glove, and I am extremely careful. When you're using a mandolin, you usually have a guard, and that is what I would recommend, um, but I love this cutting glove. And I keep my hand, my palm, pretty flat, so you'll see as I go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do these little beet chips here. Now 
Now, when I get down to the end here, I don't go any further for safety reasons, and I'll chop this up and use it in a different application. But you can see here that I have my chips. Now, these are really thin. These are even thinner. They're almost like, almost see-through, okay? These are a little bit thinner than I did before. So I'm gonna do my next beat just a little bit thicker than that, and we'll see which ones work out better. Wow, look how thin they are. They're beautiful though. That would be great for a beet carpaccio. Oh my gosh, that is amazing, especially if they were pickled. Oh, sounds so good. I love beets, by the way. All right, so let me go one more, which is about, I guess, maybe one. Let's do that. Let's see what that does, okay? That feels more like it as far as how it's slicing. All right. Yeah, that looks good. But we're gonna do both, we're gonna do both. That's what I usually do. These are very thin. <laughs> Look, I'm getting beet hands, I call them. All right, so we are preheated, so let's go ahead and get this these beets in. I'm gonna use a little, um, little tongs. But first, real quick, we need to put them in a bowl. Because you want to put a little oil on them, and you want to put a little bit of salt on them. It'll be interesting how these really thin ones do. All right, just drizzle a tiny little bit of olive oil. I mean, that might be a teaspoon. Or any oil you like would be just perfectly fine for this. And then I just, I don't measure, I just kind of sprinkle on a little bit of fine grind sea salt. Not too much, maybe, maybe that is about a quarter teaspoon, if that, for two beets. Now, I know I'm gonna get asked this question, so I'm gonna address it right after I uh, put these beets in, and that is, can I make more at once, okay? So I'll get to that in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and put these in. Now, you don't have to be too particular right now, okay? Just plop them in and then spread them out. So I don't want you to worry about feeling like you have to put them in a complete single layer. You do not. As a matter of fact, I could have probably gotten another beet in there, okay? So I probably could have done three of these beets. Some of them are small, some of them are medium. So about three medium-sized beets would be okay. Let's get this cooking so we don't want it to uh, cool off too much, and then I'll talk about what happens if you put too many in. All right, so we're gonna go down to 300 degrees. Somewhere between 300 and 325 is what I found to be the best temperature. So I'm going to start off at 300 degrees on the air crisp setting, and then we're going to see how it goes. It takes about 18 to 20 minutes to make these beets super crispy. And there is a very fine line, which I'll show you, between perfectly cooked and overcooked. All right, so first let me talk about, can, can you fill that basket up with beets? The answer is yes and no. You absolutely can, but what's going to happen? They're all gonna take a lot longer to cook. It is more time efficient to do it in batches. And like I said, you could definitely do three, maybe even four of this size beet at once, okay? And probably be fine. But any more than that, because I tried, I tried to do like five or six at once to get a whole big basket. And it, what happened is they just weren't cooking. They were steaming instead of crisping, which is sort of what I thought was gonna happen, but I wanted to try it. And it didn't work out. I ended up having to cook them a lot longer. And then I was getting frustrated because they weren't crisping up. So I took half of them out and then had to finish them up. So don't do that, okay? Just do about three beets maximum. You don't want any more than maybe three layers and, and not three thick layers. Just, you know, if they're three high, but there's room to move around, you'll be okay. Anything more than that and they're just gonna steam, not crisp. Okay, next thing I wanted to talk about is this very narrow window of perfect and horrible. <laughs> and that's basically what it is. I'll just be honest with you. Because if you let them go too far, like I did with these, okay, they, you can see the difference in the color. Let me get one. It's, this one's really good. So you can see it's still got a beautiful color, beautiful beet red, and this one is just dark, and they taste Horrible. Nothing like burnt potato chips, okay? Which I don't mind those. These taste like like 
carbon mixed with dirt, okay? They're horrible. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna stop them when they are around this color and they might look like, they might feel a little soft, but as they cool, they dry. Now, let me show you one. I think I have one that maybe not in here. I might have to get a different batch. I'll pull one of these out actually and show you underdone that will never crisp up, okay? Because there's three, three stages. Underdone, nope, that one's good. Oh my gosh, these are so amazing. Oh. So between four and five minutes into the air crisping time, you're going to want to start to flip them around a little bit, okay? And as they crisp up, they definitely will start to break apart. You'll start to see them curl a little bit. And I'm looking at these little thin ones. We'll see how they work out. They look okay right now. I just don't want to overhandle them because I don't want them to break apart. Okay, they look good, so keep going. So between four and five minutes, do a little flip, kind of separate them out a little bit more. If they're stacked one on top of each other, see if you can gently pull them apart. But as they cook, they reduce in size quite a bit and they will start to almost pull apart by themselves. So it's really not that big of a deal, but definitely I do move them around. Now I'll let it go another five minutes and do the same thing and I'll keep doing that until they're done. All right, so I wanna point this out right here. I'm gonna pull this one out. This one is starting to dry up on the edges here. That's what we wanna see. That's what gets them nice and crispy. So at this point, I just try to shake them loose if they're still stuck together and just sort of move things around a little bit just to make sure that the air can circulate. The more the air can circulate, the better outcome you're gonna have. And at this point, I also make a decision whether I'm gonna go up in the temperature a little bit. And I think for right now, I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit to 325. Now, in my test batches, I did not have to do that. But as I'm looking at these right now and thinking, hmm, they're not quite as far along as they were when I tested the recipe, it hit me. My beets were warm when I tested the recipe. These are cold right out of the refrigerator. So see how the temperature of your food will affect the way it cooks. So it is important to be flexible and to read the recipe to see if there's any indication of whether the food should be warm, room temperature, or cold, right? So when I write this recipe, I'm gonna say room temperature beets. That way that temperature of 300 will be a better starting point. And then you'll know, but make a little note, then you'll know if your beets are straight out of the refrigerator and cold, you might wanna start off at 325 to get them cooking just a little bit faster. All right, let's give it another check here. Oh, they're starting to move around on their own. That means that we're getting close. Just at this point, just sort of fluff them up a little bit. That's all you need to do. They still look good, but they do need to continue. Now I said I would show you um, what an what one would look like if you, you might think it's done, but it's not. And this would be this one right here. So let me pull that out and let that sit. One thing I'm noticing is those super, super thin ones are not like breaking apart as easily as the slightly thicker ones. They're just too small, too thin. All right, there we go. Let's put these back. Now, so this looks like a beautiful beet chip and it is, and it's nice and crispy on this side. But right here is a little bit, um, I won't say tacky, but it's soft and it will not crisp up no matter how long I leave it here. So I'll just leave it till the end. So this would be something that you would not wanna take out. It's not ready yet. And when you make a few batches, you'll begin to know exactly when they're ready and when they're not. All right, three minutes left, let's take a peek because now is the real critical time to pull some of them out like this one, okay? That's on the verge of getting too done. We don't want that at all. I'm gonna pull that one out. That looks delicious. We're gonna pull that one out. I know this seems like a little bit of a labor intensive and I'll tell you, I've made about 15 batches of these and it's really not that labor intensive, especially when you get used to knowing what to look for. So all of my thicker ones, are pretty much done right now. 
it's these thinner ones that are causing some issues. And they're still like a little bit um, ta like tacky. They're gonna be not as crisp. But I'm gonna pull them out because the rest of them look good. So isn't that interesting that the thinner ones did not um, crisp up as well, whoops, as the other ones. All right. So we're gonna let them go. So what did we go? About 17 minutes. It's a little bit, a little bit less time than normal. But remember, I increased that temperature. So I really like the results when I start with room temperature beets at 300 for 18 minutes at this thickness. Okay, that's when they turned out perfect. I mean, they were just so fantastic. I love them. All right, when you're done, put them on a cooling rack. Let them cool for a few minutes. That's gonna finish crisping them up, and then I'll give them a taste. All right, remember this one that's been over here for a while? So it is crispy on the edge, but look, it just pulls apart there. So this one is not done. So just be careful that you're not taking, off, taking them out when you have a lot of this uncooked beet or they're never gonna crisp up. Now, I've got one here that's got a tiny bit there, just a tiny little bit, and that's gonna be just fine. Mm. So delicious. All right, so I'm very curious about these thin ones because they just don't seem like they did as good of a job. So let's get one that I think is gonna be soft. And some, oh, I don't know. Oh, that's good. The flavor is really good on the thin ones. Mm. Anyway, they're absolutely delicious. Even if you don't like beets, my husband cannot stand beets. And I said, honey, I have a little treat for you. And of course he knows I have like seven boxes of beets. And he says, please tell me it's not a beet. I'm like, it's a chip. It's a chip, honey, it's a chip, try it. So he tried it and of course it was a beet chip and he's like, oh, you know what? That's not too bad. If you really liked beets, you would absolutely love them. And even though I don't like them, they're pretty good. So they really are worth giving a try. If you have an air fryer, fry them up. They're delicious and so much better than when you dehydrate them. Because I've seen recipes for dehydrating beet chips to eat like this. No, I've dehydrated beet chips for other reasons and the texture is totally different. So if you want a beet chip that's like a potato chip, do it this way.